in his army, and Saul has got thousands. And he'll trap David and have him just right up against the wall. And God will say, you think you got my servant David? He'll cause the Philistines to attack Jerusalem. And Saul says, oh gosh, I've got to either go back to Jerusalem. They're going to I'll get you later, David. He thinks he's going to get him and he doesn't. And of course, Abishai, his nephew, is, he rides with David. He's everywhere David goes. <laughs> Abishai likes to fight. He should have been in the UFC. I mean, he likes to fight. Uncle David, can I kill this guy? I'll take off this dead dog's head. Shut up, Abishai. David at one point just says, and Joab's going around murdering his cousins, and Joab is David's commanding general, and he, and he came by it legitimately. David said, whoever leads the troops in and slaughters the people of Jebus, they're going to be my commander. Joab says, that's me. And boy, he's mean as a snake. This man you don't fool with. Neither one of David's nephews. And David says, these sons of Zerah are too hard for me. I can't, you guys shut up and do, go home. Zerah was his sister. It was David's sister. And he's, they drive him out of his ever-loving mind. Joab and Abishai are two characters. And we're going to get to them. Now, where was I? Let's keep reading here about Asa. I'm going to be throwing these names at you through the Scriptures, but I want you to learn the Old Testament. Without the Old Testament, you cannot understand the New. You have to understand that Israel, God scattered for 2,600 years, and they came back and became a nation for the first time in 2,600 years, May 14, 1948. Everything... Everything that's going on in Israel right now, the World Trade Center coming down, everything is about that land over there. Oh, there may be side issues. It may be oil to some. But when it boils down to it, it's about that land. God said, the land is mine. It cannot be sold. I made the statement right before we In fact, Barry Sloan lives in Kentucky. He said, I got one of your tapes. And he said, it was after Rabin was killed and he said, you made the statement. He said, you said that God said the land is mine, Leviticus 26. And it can't be sold, and according to the last chapter of Numbers, it can't be sold or given to anybody, given away. I said, if Rabin keeps trying to give this land away and make a Palestinian state, an Orthodox Jew will shoot him. He said, when you said that, he said, knowing that he had been shot by an Orthodox Jew, he said, the hair rose up on my neck. I'm not some kind of seer. I know what the book of Numbers says. I know what Leviticus says. God said the land is mine. You can't give it away. Nobody's selling it. Now that's, in all probability, what's going on in the minds of some of those Israelis over there. They know something about the law. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. They say we're not selling it for nobody. So it's a war. Now, Let's continue reading about Asa. Wonderful man of God. Verse 11. Asa did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, as did David his father, and he took away the Sodomites out of the land and removed all the idols that his fathers had made. And his fathers, who was making idols? That was his fathers. Solomon. That was his great-grandfather. His grandfather was Rehoboam. Evidently, Rehoboam and Abijah hadn't gotten rid of him. They kind of just coexisted with the idol gods. And Asa comes along and says, My great-grandfather Solomon, why he did that, I don't know. A wonderful man of God, one of the wisest men that ever lived, and he brings, marries all these strange women and brings idol worship into Israel and but he doesn't make it the national god and goddess that Ahab does. Now look here. And he took away the Sodomites out of the land and removed all the idols that his fathers had made and also Maaka his mother. This is Asa's mother. Even her he removed from being queen because she had made an idol in a grove and Asa destroyed her idol and burned it by the brook Kidron. And look what God says about Asa in the next verse. But the high places were not removed. Nevertheless, Asa's heart was perfect with the Lord all his days. And God pronounces Asa as a good man, as a good king. 
look over here. Anytime you're reading in the Kings, read the Chronicles accounts. Let me just give you an illustration here, and then we'll keep on with the high points of Baal worship. Look over here in Second Chronicles 15. Second Chronicles 15. Chronicles is, according to some of the scholars, this is the priest viewpoint of these events of Israel's history. The book of Kings is the viewpoint from the kings of Israel. So you got priest and king. These are the two anointed ones in Israel. So look over here in 2 Chronicles. And we're going to stay on this in this. We'll be on this when we get back to Christmas next year. Because what I'm going to teach you is the history of Israel. Biblical history. I put it that way. Biblical history of Israel. Let's go over here to 2 Chronicles 15 chapter. Now this is the Chronicles account of the same thing about Asa. 2 Chronicles 15. Now we're going to look at verse 16. Also concerning Maaka, the mother of Asa, the king, he removed her from being queen because she had made an idol in a grove. And Asa cut down her idol and stamped it and burned it at the brook Kidron. The best thing you can do for your mother is to tell her her idols has to go out of her life. And what's her idol? Self. Self. Covetousness is idolatry. Covetous, pleonectase, means want more. Say, Mom, you can't have your idols around me. But the high places were not taken away out of Israel. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was perfect all his days. Now, you've got to read the 14th chapter and the 16th chapter. Asa gets a little ornery in his old age, and he gets diseased in his feet because God brings that disease upon him in verse 12 of the following chapter. And what he does, he does something very wicked. But I don't have time to get in the 16th chapter. He tries to recruit a pagan foreign king. He tries to, to recruit a pagan foreign king to go against Baasha. See, at the same time, Asa's king, Baasha's king over here in northern Israel. Baasha is one wicked man. He sets up an iron curtain. He sets up a wall of Berlin. He sets a wall so that people cannot go from northern Israel to southern Judah. And Asa goes out and recruits. He's going to recruit the king of Syria to come and help him fight, to help him fight Baasha. But when you go back to the 14th chapter, Asa didn't try to recruit anybody. He just said, God, he said, I got a million Ethiopians coming against me. And I only got a little over 500,000 soldiers, and they've got 300 iron chariots. The iron chariots were the chariots with the scythes on the wheels. You couldn't go against them. 300 of them, are you kidding? They would, ra they would just rampage through a crowd, just knocking over people, ripping them apart. And yet Asa prays that famous prayer. Why didn't he? I don't understand. I don't even pretend to be able.